Hello and welcome to this video on input types in control systems. By this point, if you've been following our videos, we've seen how to assemble the building blocks of electrical and mechanical systems in order to form differential equations, and then how to apply the Laplace transform to these equations, rearranging this to find the transfer function. And in our previous video, we said that the transfer function was defined like this, uh, g of s being equal to the Laplace transform of the output divided by the Laplace transform of the input. Up until now though, we haven't really talked about inputs yet. In the examples in our previous videos, we just call the input something like vi of s or fi of s for an input voltage or an input force or something similar when we're in the s domain like this. But remember that a system will be forced to respond differently depending on the nature of the input. A big advantage of knowing the transfer function like we've defined it here is that we can rearrange this to say something like this. The Laplace transform of the input multiplied by the transfer function g of s is equal to the Laplace transform of the output. So the advantage of this rearrangement here is we can see that whatever input we apply to our system, we can determine the output or the system response because we're multiplying whatever the input happens to be by the transfer function and that gives us the output or the response of the system. Let's hold that thought though for later videos because in this video we haven't looked at inputs at all yet and so we're going to focus in this video on the different types of input. So there are many types of input to a system, both electrical and mechanical, but we can broadly classify inputs into different types depending on their form. And there's many different types but we're only going to focus on four in this video and these are the step input, the ramp input, the impulse input and the sinusoidal input. And here's a visual representation of each of these. We'll talk about them more in more detail in just a moment. But what we're going to do in this video is express each of these input types in the S domain. And that means that we can, returning to our equation here, we can use these in the S domain to determine the output in the S domain as well. So the first input type was our step input, and the step input is common in control systems. In an electrical system, it's the input that we'd expect when we switch something on. A supply voltage was zero, and then at some time t, the voltage switches on, and there's a sudden increase, or step increase. Uh, in a mechanical analogy, it could be something as simple as a mass falling into a hopper or a collector. The mass in the hopper was zero, and then at time t, an object falls into the hopper, and suddenly the mass increases. Let's stick with an electrical example and look at the graph below of voltage against time. So here we have a voltage um, which is initially zero volts, but then at time uh, t equals two seconds, we have this step input, and then the voltage is four volts. So a step function is an example of a delayed function because there's some time delay before the actual step takes place. In the S domain, the step function looks something like this. F of S, our, our function in the S domain here, is equal to A over S multiplied by E to the power minus ST. And here A represents the size of the step and T is the time delay. So in our example, A equals 4 because the step size is going from 0 to 4. Um, and T equals 2, the time delay. Um, T equals 2 there. And so our input can be expressed like this in the S domain. It would be, in our case, 4 over S multiplied by E to the power minus 2 S. One other thing worth noting is if we return to this um, original expression here for the step input, 
is if that step input occurs immediately, i.e. at time equals zero, we can simplify this expression a lot because if the step input is immediate, then that means that t equals zero. And if t equals zero, it means that e um, is raised to the power of zero or minus zero. And e to the power zero is one. And so this whole e um, exponential uh, raised to the power of minus zero all cancels down to one and we're left with simply a over s or a over s multiplied by one and so a step input at time zero we can simply um, give the function a over s in that simplified form there so that's worth bearing in mind um, in some later examples as well the second input type was the ramp input and it looks something like this. It's an input that steadily increases from zero in the form of a straight line graph. Uh, and this will be important in just a second. So, for example's sake, in an electrical system, we might be gradually increasing the voltage supplied to a system in a controlled manner rather than like the sudden step that we saw above. In a mechanical system, recall the example of the hopper. Suppose we're gradually pouring sand or something like that into the hopper. So the, the, rather than the sudden increase of mass, we're now gradually increasing mass. So this increase in mass is now taking the form of a ramp rather than a step function. Again, let's stick with electrical examples for the purpose of this video. But here we have a ramp input of 3 volts per second. So we can see here that for every second that passes, the voltage increases by three volts. So we mentioned this is in the form of a straight line graph. And so our gradient then is the change in Y over the change in X or, or three over one, because three volts for every one second. Um, and that's gonna give us three volt seconds to the minus one or three volts per second as our gradient here. And we mentioned the importance of this being a straight line graph and let's briefly see why. So recall, first of all, that the expression for a straight line graph is generally given as something that looks like this, y equals mx plus c. I'm sure you've all seen that or some variant of that equation before. And m is what we refer to as the gradient and c is the y-intercept. So let's make a few modifications to this. So first of all, our x-axis is really time in our case, time is passing. Um, and so rather than in terms of x, we can say t. Secondly, since our function starts from zero, its y-intercept is going to be zero. So c equals zero in this case. And now taking those two simplifications into account, we have something like this, y equals mt. Let's make one small change and let's call the gradient a instead of m. And it doesn't really matter, but we'll see why in just a second. So in the s domain our ramp function looks something like this when we perform that laplace transform we have converted y as a function of t into f as a function of s and we have here a t well a is a constant and t um, in our laplace transfer table here con converts in the form of one over s squared. And so what we have here, when we um, take both of these into account, um, we have a, it's just a constant, so it's been left alone. So we have a multiplied by one over s squared, or to be more simplified, uh, a over s squared. That's our ramp function in the s domain. And the reason m, the gradient m was changed to a, um, is just to keep it more consistent with our other input types, we're referring to the, the constant in the form A um, throughout. We'll see some more examples in just a second. So for our example of our voltage that we saw above, we found the gradient to be three, and we're calling the gradient A now. So in our case, the ramp function would be expressed as three over S squared. The third type of input was the impulse input. And the impulse we define as a sudden instantaneous pulse, which is not sustained like a step input would be. So an electrical example might be a very sudden pulse of voltage or, or something like that. 
Um, a mechanical example might be a, a collision. So imagine two snooker balls colliding. That 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 momentary collision is is instantaneous before the the balls the snooker balls bounce apart there. And so in each case, the input is instantaneous. It lasts it lasts for only a moment. Let's look at an an electrical impulse um, as an example again. And here we see an example of a five volt impulse at time 0.5 seconds. And again, you notice not, not like the step input where that, that five volts is then sustained. It's five volts only for the briefest moment and then back down again. And so we define an impulse as having zero width, else it becomes a step input, um, which is not the same thing. So like the step function, the impulse is another example of a delayed function because it doesn't take place until a certain time. And in the S domain, the impulse function is defined like this. F of S is equal to A, E to the power minus S, T. And where A here is the impulse height and T is the time delay in seconds. And so for our example in the graph here, A equals five, the height of that pulse, five volts, and T equals 0.5, the, the time delay um, before that, that Pulse happens and so our input can be expressed like this 5 e to the power 0.5 s or we could say 5 e to the power minus s over 2. The last example here is uh, the sinusoidal input which is common in electronics given the nature of alternating current um, but it's nevertheless important in mechanical systems for uh, vibrations, oscillations, uh, where displacement or some other parameter can be expressed sinusoidally. Again, we'll just refer to an electrical example here, but we have a sine input, um, and that is in the form of y equals 4 sine 5t. So we have this um, amplitude of 4, and we have an angular frequency of 5. So again, reminding ourselves of the, the basic equation for a sine wave, A sine omega t. We see here that in our case, the, the amplitude A is 4 and the angular frequency is 5. Just a very quick note here, just to remember that the angular frequency omega is not the same as the frequency f given in hertz. And so the conversion here is omega equals 2 pi f. And so, again, in electrical circumstances, if we're given a 50 hertz frequency, f equals 50, the angular frequency would be 2 pi times 50, which is 314.159 or thereabouts. And angular frequency is measured in radians per second or radians second to the minus one. Anyway, we can convert this um, sine function into... Um, the S domain ourselves using the um, table of Laplace transforms, but here it is anyway. It's F of S is equal to A omega over S squared plus omega squared. And in our case, we had an amplitude of four and an angular frequency omega of five, if you remember. So we would have something like this. Um, four times five on the top simplifies a little bit to 20. So we have equals 20 over s squared plus 25. So this video, all we've looked at is the different input types and how we can represent them in um, the s domain. We haven't really done anything with them, but in the following videos, we're gonna combine our understanding of the transfer function, which we talked about in the previous video, with these different input types. And like we mentioned at the start, we can multiply the input by the transfer function to determine the output. And we'll see plenty of practical examples of that as well.